Good morning. Thank you for taking time to attend our webinar. Is your application performance costing you productivity or lost revenue? Presented by ITROI. My name is Pablo Pitaluga, and I am ITROI's Vice President of Sales. For today, I am also your webinar coordinator. At this time, all lines are in listening mode only to prevent background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. You have two options to participate. The first one is by typing a question in the question box in the webinar control panel on your screen, or you can also click on the raised hand icon on the same webinar control panel. And I will then unmute your line and announce your name, and you can proceed with asking your question. Our presenter, Steve Meller, is the Senior Vice President of Service Assurance and an industry veteran. Steve is an information visionary, a developer of extensive experience with different organizations, financials, and human capital management. Steve has had a lifelong pursuit of excellence in IT operation, and today manages a team of developers and engineers devoted to our customer success by delivering products and services tailored to meet their most demanding needs. Steve, you may proceed with your presentation. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, as Pablo said, um, I'm really senior and old, and um, they're ready to farm me out to, uh, to Medicare. Uh, Steve, you need um, to stop interrupting, but you, your slideshow is not changing. My right. Okay. Uh, so um, if application performance is holding you back, learn how to make it your strength. Oh, uh, so so Pablo was referring to the fact that I was supposed to move on to the bio so that y'all could see the bio while he talked about me. That, Thank you, Steve. That, you know, I, I hate to I hate to talk about me. <laughs> it's, it's not about me. It's about APM. So um, so when we talk about APM, what we're really talking about is um, service assurance. And under the umbrella of service assurance, we talk about application performance management, uh, infrastructure management, network performance management, service operations management, and the reporting component, which uh, is, can be referred to as executive insight. The reporting component is really huge, right, because it covers um, the display of information for your peers, for your data center, and for the stakeholders. So that, that's really quite huge. Um, I'm going to cover a, um, a brief overview of how does APM work. So for those of you who already know, uh, it's, it's just a bit of a refresher. So in a uh, typical application from end to end, there's some user way over on the left, and they're issuing some request to the servers for information or posting information that goes through the enterprise network. Uh, through a firewall, load balancers, into your web servers, switch to the application servers, and then to the back end and back again. And uh, when all is going well, you have that yellow, those yellow arrows that show everything is proceeding snappily, and the green arrow to show everything is responding snappily, and it's all good, and the, uh, the components, the intervening components are all working fine. But um, the, the real measure of, um, of the environment is when bad things which can and will happen, you know, Murphy's Law and what have you. So in the lower left, that was the, the, good, the good, happy environment. And in the upper right, that's the problematic environment. You can you know, clearly see that there's some red stuff going on having to do with things taking too long. Um, so what APM can do for you is reduce application downtime by as much as 70 percent, 
measured decreases in mean time to repair by 50% or more, and an average return on your investment of over 300% within eight months or less. These are real world numbers collected by, uh, by CA, in fact, that uh, allows us to um, allows us to argue the case with the environment that we with our stakeholders with the um, budget holders, but why APM is valuable even if the application is not uh, revenue critical to your environment. If it is revenue critical, nobody can argue the numbers. So um, when we talk about APM, we talk about different pieces of the uh, the total focus. Um, across the board, APM would include uh, components that measure and monitor the network infrastructure, components that measure and monitor the web server and application server infrastructure, and components that monitor the database infrastructure. All of that is pretty much invisible to the end user. So it's really all about customer experience. So to that end, CA has this uh, portion of the APM monitoring suite that is called the Customer Experience Manager. And the CA Customer Experience Manager is one of the best in the business. It is uh, ranked by Gartner as uh, one of the premier uh, tools for customer experience measurement and monitoring because we're actually sampling the live customer data. I'm going to back up just a second to show you here in this slide what CEM does is it will put a network tap, um, kind of like drinking from a fire hose, and it will put it somewhere in this network hanging off perhaps the load balancer kind of in the middle of the screen. Uh, maybe that, that it will be hanging off the, um, the router in front of the firewall, maybe the switch, but maybe all of these places. But the important part is it has to be between the end user on the left and the infrastructure on the right so that we can, um, we can measure and monitor the actual end user experience. Meaning, when we're seeing the data going to the back end and coming back the other way, we're, we're going to be monitoring what the end user actually experiences, not whether or not the web server is up, or the application server is up, or the database is running queries. None of that really matters. What matters is what kind of service is the end user experiencing. So for those of you who are familiar with this screen, uh, what we're looking at is the list of uh, monitors or network taps that are in this particular uh, environment. So in this environment, we have three network taps uh, that are called TIMS for the uh, Transaction Impact Monitor. Uh, we have uh, in, the, in the column called Name, we have TIM2, TIM3, and TIM1. I suppose I should have sorted them correctly in numerical order. Um, TIM3, however, is disabled. Um, once those network taps are recording, then we can, uh, we can measure and monitor the actual uh, transactions that the users are issuing to the back end. So for this business service, as you look at this table from left to right, the business service is, a pro is called process. Um, this business service called process has numerous business transactions that are involved. Um, address validation, um, a uh, process setup business transaction, uh, profile, client search, client search options, client search submit, um, office open. And those are examples of business transactions. So a business transaction uh, is what the customer is going to be, what the end user is going to be doing. The transaction is the uh, HTML component, the H, I'm sorry, the HTTP component, whatever it might be, that is actually doing the, the, the heavy lifting for the, for the business function that the user is requesting. So the first 
five or six, there's a single business transaction and there's a single component transaction that maps to it. Client search submit near the bottom actually has two um, transactions that encompass the um, the client search submit. One is select options for platform search and the other is platform search result.aspx. When those transactions are being executed, what we can do is we can monitor for uh, for performance and for quality of the metrics. So we can monitor for are things going slowly. And here I've put in, uh, I've, uh, here the uh, tool has uh, slow time thresholds of five seconds here, five seconds there, two seconds here, two seconds there, at the business transaction level. So the only place where we're monitoring slow time in this environment is at the business transaction level. So even this guy down near the bottom, the client search submit that has two individual transactions to make it up, they both have to complete within this two-second interval. Uh, another view of that might be fast time. Um, is this completing too fast for a normal transaction? Um, high throughput, uh, we would set a threshold if um, there was too much uh, volume of traffic going through. Low throughput, a threshold if there's too little, and large size and small size of individual um, buckets of the transaction. The success rate SLA, Sigma SLA, and transaction time SLA, these are important to your business for your service level agreements. Right? So uh, CEM, the customer experience manager, is all about the service level that the customer ex is experiencing in the environment. So let's see how um, how this plays out in a normal uh, customer environment and how we go about improving our performance or uh, man I'm sorry managing our performance so that improvements are real and realized and we get um, we get uh, definite ROI. So um, a typical SLA. Um, in this case, uh, we're looking at, an, uh, again, another screen in the CEM manager. A typical SLA uh, might be whatever it is, might be whatever you put in here. In this case, our um, average time SLA on the far right of this little graph is eight seconds. Um, the average time observed in the next, in the next to the left column is uh, for the process front end uh, ranges from 0.03 to 5.368 seconds. So the, the timing looks like it's generally within my SLA, but my success rate status is red. It's critical, it's in critical status. That tells, the, obviously, it's red. <laughs> That's bad. The back end, though, is green, which tells us that, hmm, this is funny. So my back end is doing what it's supposed to be doing but it's my front end that's in, uh, in crisis. So right away, you have that, that, that feel for, um, is, it, is, it, is it bigger than a bread box? Is it my front end that's in trouble or my back end when the users are not experiencing good behavior? And here we see the success rate observed is only 86%, so 14% of requests are going south. So we drill down into these um, individual front-end business transactions, see how it says uh, my process front-end. So in the upper left corner, it says under transaction SLA, you see the business application is process front-end. To the right, it says my business service is process front-end. Uh, for all users, time frame today, and this is a performance view. So we're looking at our business transaction SLA report. We see a bunch of our business transactions are in critical status. Um, some of the success rate observes are as low as under 50%, specifically our personal profile request. So um, that's going to be somewhat problematic for, for our, our um, sample application, our, our process application. 50% is really bad. The next question is going to be, how do I know? How do I know what the problem is? How do I um, how do I drill down into it? Those, those are good questions to ask, but think about it from, 
from your organization's perspective. At this point, right, we already know enough to um, to have added value to the application. To the, to, we we already know enough to know that APM has added value, right? So so in a normal in the normal world. Right at this point, we're just scrambling because we've had a bunch of users call in and go, "The sky is falling." Right, but we we don't yet know. In, in, without APM, we don't know. Right, it's it's so we're calling the DBAs. This is the DBAs. They're slow SQL. We're calling these guys. We're calling those guys. Somebody tell me what's wrong. Right, with CEM, it's already telling us what's wrong. If if the back end is green and some of the some of the uh, uh, some of the business functions like client search are green, but some of the business functions like personal profile are red. That's going to that's going to tell us where to focus and how to focus our efforts. So um, what we might do is we might make use of the fact that often um, CEM is delivered tied back to Introscope. So for a full experience, a full APM uh, solution. Not only do does uh, do we promulgate um, CEM uh, and TIMS network taps for the uh, purpose, but we also deliver um, an Interscope enterprise cluster. Uh, we we probably want to deploy agents. The agents. I'm going to move back a second. Please stand by. Here I'm moving back. The agents will live, will, will reside on the web servers or and or on the application servers. In particular, if the agents are Interscope agents and we've instrumented it correctly, then CEM can actually tell us which transaction originated on which application server and which web server because the signatures are all there written into it by the Interscope agent for CEM to see. Invisible to the application, but visible to CEM. So that gives you this this very nice capability of viewing the whole world from your CEM console. So if I'm here and I'm trying to drill down into a defect, um, I might be able to find the uh, the individual agent that was involved, the individual application server. And so if personal profile is red the way this shows up at the top, let's look at the, the Interscope view of things. Our business transactions um, in the upper left um, column are the list that we are familiar with, personal profiles and authentications. The next column tells us our average response time for the interval. Um, this type view from Interscope is already telling us that many of these um, Many of these components are in um, are in red, so they're uh, unusually bad. The next column tells us total transactions per interval. A typical Interscope interval is 15 seconds, so we're seeing you know 50, 60, 100 transactions for every 15 seconds. That's that's a pretty good clip for a uh, customer-facing application. But then we see our total defects per interval on the right. And what we see is that that's quite a few, right? Um, so we're seeing uh, as many as 10, 15, even up to 50 percent uh, of uh, these transactions are failing. Specifically, the personal profile guy, which is the yellow total defects per interval, we see that we have 31 defects per interval out of these total 62 transactions. That's uh, there's our 50 percent. So we know that there's 50 percent. We know it's related to personal profile. Um, and we can go drill down into personal profile using Interscope to get that deep level root cause analysis, uh, deep dive diagnostics, figure out what's going on. But figuring out what's going on is, um, I know for many of you application admins, that's, that's the challenge. But for your organization, right, the, the challenge is already over. Right? We've already identified the problem and targeted a very specific component and application and part of the application that's at, at that's uh, at issue. So, so APM has already decided all that for you. The DBAs can go back to bed. The um, uh, the network admins can go back to bed. Everybody else goes back to bed except for the, the two or three folks who know that personal profile is my bailiwick. 
So um, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to extract data out of CEM so that we can get value from it uh, each and every day. And one way to do that is to draw defect reports that, um, that we can then uh, insert into another application. So um, if your enterprise uh, reporting application is, um, uh, is whatever, right, it's, it's, uh, it's crystal, it's what have you, right, you have some enterprise reporting application, maybe you like using the delivered CEM or Interscope reports, those work fine. But um, you can get to a much better place by uh, drawing out the data from CEM and making use of it externally. So, um, so I, I've pr produced this report out of CEM. I've just ran the report and saved it to, a, um, to an Excel format. What you can see from this report is at a quick glance um, things about your application and users that you might not know. Um, Tom is seeing repeated missing response um, uh, defects. Um, Sally has uh, a partial response defect. The partial response might be that, remember, we, we showed that a particular business transaction might be made up of numerous individual transactions. So Sally might be seeing one or more of the uh, individual transactions, but not completing the whole business transaction. So think about it from your application admin point of view, right? So if all you're doing is monitoring the application server, you don't really know that Sally hasn't seen the whole application uh, come down to her. Because as far as you're concerned, um, maybe 50% or more of, of the transactions are successful. Right? But for Sally, it's a failure. If any part of it is a failure, it's a failure, right? So that's really huge to be observing things from the customer experience perspective. So if we've um, extracted this data that tells us about the IP address of the, um, of the client, the IP address of the involved server, the MAC address for the purpose of network diagnostics, we can, we can glean from this kind of report a whole lot about our infrastructure and feed it into analytics. So, so analytics, right? That's the ability to take data from Interscope, from CEM, tie it all together, and make a, a report stew out of it that improves your company's position to be able to respond to events. So from from CEM, you're going to do an export. That, that export, uh, and CEM uses an Oracle database for its uh, data store. Uh, Interscope uses its own um, proprietary data store, but you can still, uh, you can still extract data through the, um, through the Interscope web service. Uh, uh, there's, a delivered, um, there's a delivered workstation query uh, format that you can use, or you can use the, uh, the JDBC format, they're basically equivalent, and issue um, very specific queries against the data. So here's an example of a, a historical data query going against the Interscope uh, data store. And you can see that it, the syntax is not SQL, get historical data from agents matching host.star, right? That's not SQL. Um, so, and you're not, you're not allowed to use vanilla SQL. Even if you're using the JDBC interface, it doesn't support all variations on a select statement. So Interscope's ability to, uh, to provide data is somewhat limited. The do better there is to, um, is to pull all of your Interscope data back uh, for a given day, uh, store it into a, uh, a day's worth of data in a back-end uh, environment, augment it with, I went back to the CEM view, augment it with this information, and tie the Interscope performance data with the CEM adherence to SLA data to, to glean from it a total picture of what's happening with my environment from a response perspective and what's happening to my environment from a quality perspective. 
on our back-end environment, we can exercise our analytics tools to, go, to draw um, really high-quality reports. If this is the kind of data, I went forward to uh, the output from the Interscope query, if this is the kind of data that we're extracting from Interscope, um, it's really just right CSV information. So easy to draw into a, a, um, a back-end reporting environment. So now we've seen easy ways to take data out of Interscope and CEM, pull it into a back-end reporting environment. Back-end reporting is where analytics take place. And that's really our goal, is to be able to draw the data out, exercise analytical analyses on the data, and provide um, guidance to the organization, guidance to our stakeholders as to where to put our money and efforts and how best to apply it. So um, this is an example of issuing a query against our, um, our CEM data. We can see that the CEM data follows a very standard SQL, right? We, uh, there is a, uh, a known schema definition. It allows us to pull data from the CEM database as we see fit, right? This happens to be an Oracle query. There, um, the CEM uh, environment supports uh, uh, Oracle as a back-end environment. So between uh, extracting data from Introscope using its web service, and extracting data from CEM using any sort of um, SQL tools, including um, web services, we can provide our back-end reporting environment with a full picture. So when we put that all together, what we end up with is potentially very cool reports, right? We can have pie charts that represent the success and failures of our uh, process front ends, our profile, our client search, our personal profile, um, process back ends, everything looks fine, our authentication service, our client search service, our client profile service. We can, we can use any sort of reporting tool to get to other kinds of views that include um, network components, how much of the traffic is being sent, um, how much is successful, how much is unsuccessful, all sorts of things that allow us to, to do analytics on the environment. From analytics, we are, able to, uh, we are able to successfully argue to the business how much money to spend and where to spend that money. The business can see the numbers. They can see it in a form that is is consumable, right? It's not, you know, the business is not trying to look at this and say, oh, gee, I don't know, there's some numbers, you know, some numbers, some letters, some, some information. No, they're looking at this. And that makes it really easy for them to tell uh, where to put their money and, um, and, and allows you the ability to, uh, to make your case without a lot of arm waving. So um, that's the, uh, the ITROI uh, do better, is to take APM, apply it in the business, and exercise analytics on top of it. And ITROI is ideally positioned to help you do that because of our uh, experience with CA products, because we have our own components, such as the integration bridge, that allow you to automatically extract and data from one environment, push it into another, including data validation and reporting. So uh, ITROI has the tools to deliver the kind of uh, analytics and metrics that you come to expect out of your data environments. And at that, I'll open the, uh, the floor to any questions. Uh, if anybody has anything they'd like to, uh, to ask, now's the time. Steve, thank you very much uh, for the wonderful presentation. I hope the audience uh, agrees with us as well. Um, I'd like to remind you, if you would like to ask questions, the easiest way is to type a question on the webinar control panel on the right side of your screen and I will read the question uh, to Steve. You can also 
uh, raise the hand and uh, by clicking on the icon on the webinar control panel, and I will uh, unmute your line and uh, invite you to speak. Uh, Steve, a handful of uh, questions have um, come in uh, from the audience, and and they are as follows. And and, and I read, uh, what kind of overhead, if any, does having this monitoring create to application performance in your experience? Well, the customer experience component is a network tap, and typically that network tap is part of the delivered infrastructure of the network switches. So for example, a, a Cisco switch or load balancer has a port on it that's called a span port. Uh, the span port is designed to provide a copy, uh, a, an unaudited copy of packets of the network data for monitoring purposes, and one of the purposes that that monitoring is uh, is used for is security, right? So, if you're a uh, network infrastructure team, your job is to make sure that um, there are no hackers trying to attack or no um, nobody's downloading your enterprise information. So that that takes place at the network layer. Well, our application performance tools can um, and monitor that same stream of data. Remember, it's a it's a tap, so it's really not interfering with the end-to-end -end flow of data. Similarly, the Interscope agents um, can be deployed in a way that is not intrusive. However, it should be noted that uh, Interscope agents are intrusive. They do live on the application. So um, the CEM component is a network tap. It's non-intrusive. The Interscope agent part is intrusive. I'd like to remind the audience again to ask questions. Uh, please feel free to type your questions on the question box on the webinar control panel on the right side of your screen. Uh, Steve, another question that has uh, come in, and I read, can historical logs be applied to APM for analysis? Uh, well, CEM in particular is a uh, network tap based device. We can also drive CEM from, uh, from the Interscope agent. So there's, there's a manner in which the customer experience perception can be driven um, somewhat artificially by the transactions taking place inside the application servers. Historical data from a network perspective can be fed into CEM for static analysis. However, the real value of CEM is to monitor the networks in real time, is to see that customer experience as it transpires, as the customers are actually feeling it. Uh, from end to end. So at any given moment, a customer is um, is logged into your system. They are experiencing, uh, uh, hopefully, mostly successes. But sometimes they're experiencing slow performance, and sometimes they're experiencing failures, such, such as partial responses or missing responses. In that case, we want to be able to monitor that directly. So uh, most Web server logs don't provide the ability to get to that granularity. It's just invisible to them. The web server log shows the get, and it shows the, the status of the get, but the, um, the, the all-encompassing user experience view, which is more than just the singular get, it's, a, it's the get of this page, and the get of that page, and the get of the other page, and you put it all together, and it becomes a end-to-end -end experience. That is invisible to to logs. So I would offer that um, that logs are a, a significant step down from the deployment of a successful APM implementation. Steve, a couple more questions that have come in. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I read: Can this APM be used with products which are not from CA? Yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, the exa so 
So um, CEM is the uh, is, so the APM solution is a um, application performance monitoring and management solution. The application part can be any application. So um, the kinds of applications that are available um, to be monitored for CEM, it's really any application that uses HTTP to communicate with the back end, to communicate with your application. So it's, it's any, any application that's essentially browser-based can be monitored by CEM. Um, so I have been on, uh, I've, I've used CEM successfully with um, banking applications, with insurance company, customer-facing applications, with point-of-sale applications for, for very large retail stores. Um, anything that's using HTTP can be monitored with CEM. Similarly, any Java application can be monitored with, uh, with Introscope, and any .NET application can be monitored with, uh, with a, a, another kind of Introscope agent as well. So um, for those cases where you're not using H HTTP protocols, um, uh, the APM suite includes a product called the, um, the ADA, formerly known as SuperAgent. Um, that network tap component uh, doesn't require HTTP and can monitor any TCP protocol uh, for transaction monitoring. And that can all be fed back into Introscope. From Introscope, we can pull the data out and report on it and, and get the stakeholder um, reporting value that we talked about from our analytics tools. So the answer is, uh, yeah, you name it. Thank you, Steve. Um, uh, another question that has come up. Can you talk about buying uh, Willy software versus engaging uh, service engagers to find bottlenecks? ITROI is a uh, channel partner, a gold channel partner of CA. So we can provide um, any or all uh, capabilities that an organization is looking for. So we can, uh, so if you engage us in a pre-sales environment, we'll come in, we'll look over your, um, your deployment of your application, we'll advise you on whether or not you need this component or that component, um, give you the, uh, the best performing, uh, most cost effective solution that you can, uh, that you're looking for. And um, and then follow up with the services engagement. So um, so the answer is we can uh, ITROI is ideally positioned to uh, to provide that end to end uh, level of support at a price point that is uh, that is going to be very attractive. Well, thank you. Let me remind the audience: if you have any questions, um, please type it in in the webinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, I'd also like to share with the audience that uh, this session is being recorded and I will be sending an email out to all the participants later on this week once we upload the webinar to um, our servers um, so you can access it for future reference or share it internally with your team. Um, another question that just came in uh, does uh, APM have any ability to send out automatic alerts if the application is slow? Oh, absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, for for real time monitoring, um, what uh, is, so, so Introscope and CEM can interface to your organization's standard alerting components using either. Um, that tried and true, most wonderful, least favorite of all email, right? Sorry, sorry about the sarcasm. Um, so email, uh, we uh, also, our components can interface to uh, SNMP devices. So that would include, um, you know, perhaps the um, IBM um, NetCool environment, for example, or uh, CA's um, 
uh, service desk. Another means is through web services. So we can generate a, uh, a web service call to, um, to uh, either open a ticket or generate alert or you know, whatever the, where the need may be. And at the end of the day, you know, if, if all those things, uh, if none of those things will work for your particular alerting needs, um, APM can fire off a script, a, a, some operating system level program that will do whatever it is that we've written code to, to do for it, or that you've written code, because it's really scripting a, scripting of pearls, scripting of shell languages, scripting of uh, window shell, whatever, whatever your preference would be. Steve, another question that has come in. Is this application customizable? Uh, actually, it is. So um, Interscope, um, Interscope can be customized to view specifically the classes and methods that your organization is interested in monitoring. CEM can also be customized to monitor um, certain parts of an application that are that would uh, otherwise be hidden from view. So for example, um, one of the things that we, we, we often do with CEM is we customize it to exclude private data. So for example, um, somewhere in a, in a web, in, uh, in a web exchange, um, some customer's social security number may be in the, in the network packet. Well, we don't want to see it. We don't care what it is. Um, and it doesn't matter to us in the least. And if we store it, we become part of a problem, not a solution. So CEM specifically excludes social security numbers as you um, customize a bad, is a bad word, configure. Um, CEM also it can exclude uh, credit card information so that um, maybe only the last four is important to your, uh, to your monitoring needs. Um, maybe none of it is, is relevant to your monitoring needs, so we can, we'll exclude the whole thing. Another variation on that theme would be uh, login IDs. Right? Everybody's got a different way that they uh, store or uh, present login IDs in the uh, information packages, and CEM can be uh, tweaked to, um, to see or to, um, to perceive a login ID in a field that would normally work where it would normally be stored. Steve, another question that has come in. Uh, can APM do a low testing scale to thousands of concurrent users to simulate peak production loads? Well, so APM is not that tool. APM is the monitoring tool, not the um, generation tool. There is a um, a transaction generator available in the uh, APM suite of products. Um, I would offer that uh, for transaction generation, um, you know, that's that's a different conversation. But for um, uh, for monitoring, APM will in fact in fact you know uh, one of so APM's um, best philosophy of deployment is to have a configuration and development for a developer to understand during unit testing what's right or wrong with their development processes. In load test environments, performance environments, will function ideally to, um, to be proactively in front of uh, potential issues that are load related for production. They'll, uh, so um, all, for example, um, in, a, um, um, in an HR uh, environment, you may be interested in um, on the last Friday of a payroll period, you know, there's going to be you know, hundreds of people hitting the servers all at once, putting in their, their time or their payroll information, or uh, at the end of the benefits period, they're putting in their benefit submission, and it all happens on one day. What's that going to look like uh, in terms of load? Will my application withstand it? And APM will tell you that. I would like to remind the audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to type it on the right-hand side of the, um, of the webinar panel, uh, control panel. Uh, I believe, Steve, uh, that's um, all the questions that we have from uh, the participants.
Um, any uh, final comments, um, Steve, that you'd like to share with the audience before I wrap it up? Uh, thanks very much for attending today. Um, I appreciate your time. I know that time is valuable, and I hope that you have uh, uh, gathered from this session um, everything that you came to see and more. And I'd like to just echo Steve's thoughts of um, thanking you folks for taking time to participate. And again, perhaps by the end of this week, early next week, I'll, we'll be sending an email with a replay link to the webinar. And I uh, look forward to seeing you participate in um, some of the webinars that we will be uh, launching uh, later on in September. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.